Hi, my name is Janos Borst and I'm a computer science researcher from Leipzig University and I'm here to present our work on creating a historical sentiment index for the Berlin Stock Exchange between the years of 1872 and 1930. This project was uh, funded by the German Research Foundation um, within the context uh, called More Than a Feeling. The goal was to see if there's any correlation between the mood that is created in newspapers, the so-called media sentiment, and the actual stock market prices. We also needed the support of domain experts, of course, so this project was run jointly with uh, colleagues from the Economic History Department in Regensburg. Since we wanted to focus on the Berlin stock market, um, we needed a fitting source of data to represent this. So with the support of the National Library in Berlin, we had access to scans of the Berliner Börsenzeitung, the Berlin stock market newspaper. In the beginning of the projects, we were able to get our hands on around 18,000 uh, scans of these market reports between the years of 1872 and 1930. And the first phase of the project was actually about uh, creating a machine readable text uh, corpus from this uh, source of scans. So there was a lot of OCR and layout detection. After concluding the first phase, we now are working on the second phase. Um, so we want to use this corpus uh, to extract sentiment information over time. And the goal is to investigate if there are any correlations between the historical price development and the reported mood at the Berlin Stock Exchange. And this should be proxied in these uh, reports. So, of course, this domain and this uh, data source brings a lot of challenges with it. It's a historical language. Um, it's got the artifacts from OCR and uh, layout detection and stuff like that. Uh, we have the main specific language, we have uh, of course also French words used in German sentences and so on. A lot of stuff is going on. But the idea is still that given the right data we should be able to uh, train some kind of machine learning magic to uh, achieve our goal, right? So in the first effort, we naively used the sentiment algorithm to classify sentences into the three classes negative, calm, mixed, uh, and positive. And in many cases, this worked quite well. So you can see this uh, with the examples that are on the slide. Uh, the first one talks about quite dull and lower than ever, so it's obviously a negative statement. The second one is firm but not very busy, so maybe a calm mix. And this, the, the third one is uh, confident and favorably influenced, so it's obviously a positive sentim uh, sentiment. And actually this is where the formalized and restricted vocabulary and uh, formalization of syntactic uh, statements came in handy, because this makes detection of sentiment quite uh, easy. But then after uh, some close reading and investigation, we realized that this had significant shortcomings. Many of the aforementioned nested clauses were specifically stating opposite market movements. Um, and while this might uh, result in an overall just mixed classification, the important thing is that uh, it would be interesting to uh, separate the market mood from the sentiment towards single stocks. So we came up with a label-wise hierarchy for a detailed look on how the reports actually mention market sentiments. And uh, first, any sentence can either be neutral or contain some form of tonality. So this would be the first step to just, uh, separate all the neutral sentences from the actual sentiment containing sentiments that we are uh, sentences that we are interested in. If we know a sentence contains some form of tonality, uh, it can be this sentiment can be attached to one of three levels. The first level would be um, individual entities which are in most cases just single stocks or company mentions. 
Um, the second level would be sectors, which are groups of stocks or branches of industry, for example, the construction values or ironworks industry, or sometimes even foreign stocks, which would just um, mention the country where the stocks are from. And then the third level and the most interesting one to us is the overall market. So where, um, where statements about the sentiment at the general mood at the stock exchange uh, would be made. So the goal is to split these sentiments level and to be able to analyze them individually. So we translated this label hierarchy into a classification workflow. And basically, for every, of, for every level of the hierarchy, we, we devised a machine learning model um, and trained it. So we're starting with the sentences. At first, we need some kind of sentence type classification model, uh, which we, would be just a binary classification uh, with neutral alternality. And then we can discard a, every sentence that's just uh, neutral and would feed all the sentiment containing sentences into the second model, which would be an entity level classification model. Uh, at this point, we have a multi-label classification because um, as mentioned before, any sentence can mention more than one of these entity levels and that's exactly what we want to find out. So uh, this is a multi-label classification and uh, arbitrary subset of these three in labels, individual entities, sectors and markets can be uh, given. And then using this information of there is a sentiment and which aspects are present in the sentence, we devise uh, aspect-based sentiment classification, which then classifies the negative, positive and mixed and calm labels with regards to the given um, entity level. And in the end, we have a sentiment index that can be aggregated uh, with focus on one of these entity levels and we can analyze them separately. So the data workflow um, in this case this is a part of an image that, is, uh, that you can see in the paper where we outline the process of training and evaluating models to uh, tackle the, the aforementioned tasks. In the end, it was a two-step process. So in the first step, a data set was created from expert annotations. We sampled around 1,500 sentences overall, um, stratified by year. And after creating uh, data sets for each of these steps, we trained models uh, and investigated the quantitative and the qualitative evaluation to identify error patterns or see if the resulting evaluation metric was good enough. Um, and then in a second step, we extended the initially created data sets with corrected versions of wrongly classified examples and tried to um, correct certain error patterns that were made. And this leads to data set sizes you can see above in the, with roughly uh, 1,600 examples for sentence type classification, around 720 examples for entity level classification, and then 1,600 samples for the aspect-based sentiment classification. Um, we split everything 80-20 for training and evaluation. For model training, we employed the uh, standard fine-tuning methods uh, using a German BERT base pre-trained by DB and DZ. Um, we did um, model selection, uh, so we checkpointed every model uh, at the end of every epoch and chose the best the model with the best macro F1. Um, macro F1 is just an overall average of class-wise F1 scores. So we chose this uh, to not optimize for bias towards more frequent classes and to get a balanced performance overall, as we argue that uh, if there's a bias between, uh, towards a positive or the negative class, this would distort overall frequencies and would distort uh, the old overall trends that we try to detect. To formulate the aspect-based sentiment analysis as a machine learning problem, we follow the formulation of sentence pair classification or maybe a similar task would be natural language inference. The principle is that we take two sentences and see 
Uh, these are often called premise and hypothesis, and we try to figure out what their semantic relationship is. In most cases, it's just the, the semantic relationship would be which of these sentences or, or which of these sentence pairs is the best fit for each other. So that means we need to translate the aspect-based sentiment into a sentence and we turn each aspect with the regarding label set into a sentence by using an hypothesis template, which you can see here. So the basic template is the sentiment for aspect is label and then we can switch out the aspect and label placeholder for the, um, for the concrete entities and labels. And then we generate all three sentences. So for example, if we know that the sentence contains sentiment information regarding the sectors, then we generate these three hypotheses, uh, hypotheses with uh, uh, the sentiment for the sector. And then we switch out the labels, positive, mixed, and negative. And each of these is paired up with the original input sentence. And then we score if these sentences actually um, logically and semantically fit. And this way we would get scores for every combination and then maybe see that uh, for this specific sentence construction values were all throughout. So construction values would be the mention of a sector and then the sentiment for the sector is positive would get a low score and mix get a low score as well and then the sentiment for a sector is negative would get a high score so we can so we would be able to choose the highest scoring label which in this case would be negative and now we know that sectors have a negative uh, sentiment in this sentence and then we would repeat the process of course and switch out sector for individual entities to find um, as the sentiment regarding the uh, individual stocks mentioned in this sentence. Now, in these following slides, we will share the model's evaluation along with uh, an example, and the, it will be the aforementioned construction values examples, and we just go through it step by step. So starting with sentiment type classification, uh, we, where we would answer the question of whether any given sentence contains a sentiment-related statement at all, calling them neutral in tonality, the example sentence from the beginning would be labeled as tonality because it obviously does indeed contain sentiment related statements. And as you can see in the table, the overall F1 score are all above 90%, which we deem quite sufficient for the detection of trends in the data. But the most important thing is that the recall for sentences containing sentiment related statements is especially high with 96%. And this is actually very good and important because this that way we don't lose um, much of the information about sentiments because we are able to recall 96% of sentiment containing sentences. Um, after that, every sentence that is labeled neutral will be discarded from analysis. Then the second model we trained is uh, entity type classification to answer which categories are mentioned in the sentence. So in this case, it would be sector and individual entities. Uh, you can see in the table that um, overall it's okay performance, about uh, 80 to 90 percent per class. Um, it is mm, worth noting that, of course, individual entities work best over 90% as opposed to sectors or overall markets around 80%. We argue that uh, there are two reasons for this. The first reason would be they are a little more frequent overall and also in the data. So, and, uh, so a specific mentioned stock occur more frequent, the actual string of a stock and are easier to learn. And the second is that the linguistic patterns um, are actually quite strict and very common. So also the linguistic patterns uh, makes them easily recognizable for previously unknown stocks. And in our example case, this would, the sentence would be classified with containing sentiment uh, towards the sector level and the level of individual entities. So in using this information, we can feed the third model, which would be the aspect-based sentiment classification, where we now try to figure out which sentiment belongs to which entity level. 
And again, we reach performances of around 85% F1 per class or 86 micro F1 overall. There's also, it's again worth mentioning that there's no, uh, this, it's a balanced performance, especially between negative and positive examples, so that not that it's not the case that one of these class, uh, classes will be overrepresented in the in the annotations and the trends would be distorted one way or the other. So there's a balanced performance between negative and positive and MixCom actually works uh, also pretty well. Uh, and for the this would for the example this would mean that we can now specifically annotate that this sentence contains a positive sentiment regarding individual entities and a negative sentiment regarding the sectors. So what we did is we translated the sentiment labels into plus one for positive and minus one for negative and everything else just gets zero weight and then we aggregate over one month to get a good sample of the current mood and then we are able to uh, aggregate for every entity level and do a rolling average um, for 12 months um, over the complete time interval that we uh, want to investigate. As a disclaimer maybe this paper in this paper, we focus on the transparency, transparency of the data generation approach and the details and evaluation of the machine learning models. Since we are planning to publish this data, we think this is very important. So anyone who wants to uh, use this data is able to understand how it was created and what are the drawbacks and the advantages of it. Um, so we did include um, a plot of these three levels, obviously, but uh, in an in-depth uh, historiographic uh, economic history interpretation will be deferred to future work. But there are a few aspects of this plot that are quite interesting in uh, the context that we are uh, reporting the uh, sentiment evaluation at the moment. And there are mainly two things. Um, the first thing is there are clear periods of mood swings, so there are trends, detectable trends that are over the span of a few years. So we actually have a, sig a signal in the data for every one of these entity levels. Um, the other thing is that one could argue that, okay, but what if they all run just parallel and we separate the data and in the end everything gets the same label? So now we can see that there are actually periods of time, uh, for example, around 1880 or uh, the late 1890s, where actually this, the overall mood uh, at the market um, does not strictly follow the sentiment with regards to sectors or individual entities. So there are uh, later they are opposite movements and uh, the, some peaks are a little more steep and so on. So we think that this makes a good case for the usefulness of this approach. So there are in fact differences between the three entity levels that um, may be worth exploring in future work. We are able to provide the necessary data to uh, analyze it. To summarize, we reported on the process of uh, creating an, a historical stock market sentiment index for the German stock market uh, with aspect level sentiment. We are able to separate these entity levels with regards to their sentiment mentions and can uh, and are able to analyze them individually. And the main focus of this paper or of this talk was the transparency and the understanding of the data, how it was created, uh, how it can be used. That, so that if future researchers want to um, use the data, they uh, can understand how it was generated. And this leads us to future work, with uh, the most obvious being uh, that we will try to do a more detailed uh, interpretation and give a more detailed historiographical view of the data. We want to publish the data to make it available for everyone. And there's actually some project uh, 
specifics left. So we also want to, on the level of individual entities, want to extend the framework to include concrete entity mentions and train entity recognition. So this concludes my talk and thank you for your attention.